Raptor 2 has significant improvements in every way, but a complete design overhaul is necessary for the engine that can actually make life multiplanetary. It won't be called Raptor. Remember when SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk declared this two years ago? At that time, the space community eagerly awaited that next generation engine for the Starship. But things gradually blurred over the years. It was not until recently that Walter Isaacson's biography of Elon Musk surprisingly revealed that SpaceX had critical breakthroughs beyond the SpaceX Raptor, all in the form of LEET-1337, or LEET LEET. So how powerful is this breakthrough, and what is it exactly? Also, what happened to it? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Hate him or love him, it can't be denied that Musk is one of the most influential figures of our time. The founder and CEO of SpaceX not only leads the most revolutionary and active spaceflight company on the planet, but is also at the helm of the industry-leading electric car maker Tesla. Not to mention, he recently became the CEO of Twitter, which has now been rebranded to X.com. Biographer and journalist Walter Isaacson spent two years with Musk in order to write Elon Musk, a new best-selling biography that explores what makes the entrepreneur and innovator tick. A notable section of the book is about the Raptor engine that would power Starship. Fueled by supercooled liquid methane and liquid oxygen, it had more than twice the thrust of the Falcon 9's Merlin engine. This meant that Starship would have more thrust than any other rocket in history. But the Raptor engine would not get humanity to Mars simply by being powerful. It would have to also be manufactured in fleets, in which the smallest amount is at least 40 starships. However, the Raptor was too complex to be mass produced. In fact, the insides looks like homemade spaghetti, and not the tasty kind either. So, in August of 2021, Musk fired the person in charge of its design and personally took on the title of Vice President for Propulsion. His goal was to get the cost of each engine to around $200,000, a tenth of what it then cost. SpaceX Leet Leet was probably born from there with the purpose of being better and cheaper than the Raptor. Musk and SpaceX were looking at extreme ideas like deleting the whole hot fuel gas manifold and merging the fuel pump with the main chamber injector. Musk told his team that we are on a deletion rampage. All questionable tubes, sensors, and manifolds were deleted. Musk also has looked at removing the entire skirt of the booster. The performance of the SpaceX Raptor engines is already very good, but Leet Leet will have even higher chamber pressure, which will enable more thrust. The SpaceX Leet Leet engines will be simpler, lighter, and cheaper. SpaceX will likely be able to build them at 10 times the production volume from the same sized factory that will now make 4,000 Raptor engines each year. Just so you know, the second stage of Starship has six engines, but Musk has said they'll add three engines to get to nine for the upper stage. Future Starships may have an additional three Raptor vacuum engines for increased payload capacity. If SpaceX's Raptor engines currently cost a million dollars each, there are nine engines for a Starship and having a Starship Starship at double the cost of the engines means a complete Starship costs $18 million! If SpaceX's Leet engine costs $200,000 each, then nine engines on a Starship could reduce the price of a complete Starship to $3.6 million. But if the SpaceX Leet engine costs $100,000 each, then that's only $1.8 million. I tell you folks, these are unprecedented numbers in the rocket industry, but however, Sadly, per a recent interview with Walter, the Leet Leet was scrapped, but some of what they learned was applied to Raptor 2. And so far, we have Raptor version 3. According to Musk, the Raptor 3 can achieve 350 bar chamber pressure, or 269 tons of thrust. And the engine might have entered volume production since the test that generated this thrust that took place in May. 
Starship Super Heavy Booster has 33 Raptors, so total thrust of 8,877 tons or 19.5 million pounds, he said on May 13th. Starship is destined to be the world's most powerful rocket in history. Musk also added, if we can delete and integrate enough secondary structure, small fiddly bits, then we can locally protect the rest and delete engine heat shields, he wrote. Deleting some components would decrease the engine's mass and make the engine more compact and faster to manufacture at scale compared to the previous versions. Regarding the Raptor version 3's increased power, let's compare it to Saturn V, which is the rocket that propelled NASA's Apollo astronauts to the lunar surface, generating 7.6 million pounds of thrust. However, Saturn V is no longer operational. NASA developed a new rocket called the Space Launch System, or the SLS, which generates a maximum thrust of 8.8 .8 million pounds. NASA says the operational rocket exerted more power than any rocket ever when it lifted off in November of 2022. SpaceX's Starship Super Heavy is expected to dethrone the SLS as soon as it reaches orbit with its cap capability to generate 19.5 million pounds at liftoff. SpaceX's engineers are working to prepare upgraded vehicles to perform the next orbital flight test attempt this year. As of November of 2020, 22, SpaceX completed manufacturing over 200 Raptor engines and counting at an average rate of one engine per day. The company manufactures and tests the engines at the McGregor factory. SpaceX officials recently said that they have more engines than they could fly at the moment. SpaceX aims for the cost per ton of thrust of each Raptor to be under a thousand US dollars, so a bit over 250,000 at the 260 tons of thrust that each Raptor version 3 is capable of generating. In short, Leet Leet's sacrifice was completely worth it. But if there comes a day where SpaceX re-implements that plan, it'll be even more impressive. Now, for our final bit of news that's also related to rocket engines, Evolution Space, a startup developing solid rocket motors, has recently signed an agreement to establish production and testing operations at NASA's Stennis Space Center. The company announced on October 10th that it reached an agreement with Stennis to set up a production facility at the former Mississippi Army Ammunition Plant, which Stennis acquired in 2011 after its deactivation by the U.S. Army. Evolution Space expects to start production of solid rocket motors there in the second quarter of 2024 at what will be called the Minor Scale Propulsion Center. The company will also test those motors at Stennis' E3 test complex. The agreement includes support for future expansion. By partnering with NASA, we are able to rapidly stand up a facility which will add considerable capability to the U.S. solid rocket motor industrial base, said Manny Ballestero, Vice President of Production and Development at Evolution Space, in a statement. eSpace has been developing solid rocket motors for defense and commercial applications. The company successfully flew those motors on suborbital launches in the spring from the Mojave Desert and from a floating platform in the Gulf of Mexico that served as a demonstration of sea-based launch sites being developed by the Spaceport Company. eSpace also announced it closed a bridge funding round to allow it to proceed with its work at Stennis while it works on a separate Series A round. A company spokesperson said the size of the round was $1.2 million, but that the company could not disclose the investors who participated in the round. While Stennis is a center for liquid propellant rocket engine testing for NASA and several companies, eSpace is the first company working on solid rocket motors to establish a presence at Stennis. Evolution Space gains access to critical NASA Stennis infrastructure and expertise as it continues to build its propulsion capabilities. In turn, we continue frontline work with commercial companies as we support NASA's commitment to increase access to space and grow our federal city, Rick Gilbrick, director of the Stennis Space Center, said in a NASA statement. And that's all, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.